Jost Hasselhoff, welcome to the executive talk. Thank you. You have been CEO of SIX for one and a half years now. Coming to Switzerland, all new. Yep. How did you settle so far? Well, Switzerland, I think, is, a, is an easy country to settle. Friendly people, well organized. If you know how everything works and how, uh, how things are, are done in this country, then it's easy to integrate. Um, privately, we found, our, we found a house, we found schools, so kids are settled, um, wife is settled, have, has made some new friends. Work-wise, I really, um, uh, really enjoyed starting at six and really getting my hands, uh, hands on to uh, six and its strategy. So, and you really, really got your hands on because it's so, it's so striking when we read about you, what you've done in the last one and a half years. Uh, it's quite amazing. And I, I've, I've found an article, for example, where they asked you, uh, what have you achieved in the time you've been here? And not, I'm not kidding, the, the answer was 1,121 words long. Oh, That's wow. how much you achieved <laughs> or you thought you achieved in those one and a half years. Uh, Is that typical of you, that you're really a hands-on guy and that you, have, that you have a lot of drive? Yeah. I, um, I like to, my jobs that I really like and the jobs that I really like are the jobs where I have impact, where I can really make a difference. And that means that you, you need to come in, you need to, if you really want to change something, you have to be quick. You have to make impact in the beginning and then try to push on, push on, push on. If you stay too long in a passive mode in the beginning of a job, then it's very difficult to get energy and motivation for change going. So that's why you have to push at the beginning. You have in to that push. regard, you probably found the right company because SIX is in full transformation mode, yep. is in full disruption mode as well. Were you looking for a job like that? I was looking for a job like that, but the on to be honest, the job also found me a little bit and that's where headhunters come into play. They were hunting for you, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so they found me and then I started to, know, to understand more and more about SIX, about the strategy, its positioning, what the board wanted to do with the company. And that's what really got me excited. The board really wanted to do something different with SIX than, uh, than before. When they were hunting for you and they were looking for you, uh, you once said in an interview, it was almost too good to be true. You said, I, I, I never imagined going there, yeah. but when I talked to the people, it just seemed the right fit. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, I think the, the I bring to, to SIX what SIX wanted to change. So I, I really bring something different to SIX than, than was there before. That's one. Second is SIX is a very, very important company. I still remember in my first couple of weeks, everybody I talked to said, do you remember, Jos, that you uh, please do remind yourself that you have a very important job in Switzerland? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the success of the, of the finance industry is related to the success of SIX. So, um, that has really given me a, a very positive mental push, if that's the right way to describe it. Something you always said, and something that uh, the, the board always said as well, is that they were looking specifically for someone who can change things, who has a lot of experience in change management, yep. and you do have that. Yep. Why is that? Was change always something you were looking for, that you were, you were <laughs> driving to, or was it more like a, a coincidence? In a no, way? I don't think it's a coincidence. It's part of the way I operate. I want to continuously improve things. And in many cases, I've been asked in my career, or I've been looking in my career for something where, hey, there's something really happening there. They want to change course, or there's something broken that needs to be fixed, or there's something already working well, but it needs to be elevated or even taken to the next level. Those kind of jobs I've always been looking for. And somehow those kind of jobs have always found me. So They're not the easiest jobs to do. I mean, change management comes with a lot of pressure, mm -hmm. comes with a lot of uncertainty, yeah. comes with fear of, of the staff, for example. How do you deal with that? How do you get the staff, the people that work for you, involved in the whole change management process? No. I think this is the critical element, critical element. If people don't feel they're part of it, it will not happen. It will happen at the surface, it will happen at the top or on PowerPoints, but if people are not part of it, it will not happen. So actually engaging with all the individuals that work within SIX, making sure they are part of the change has been the crucial ingredient here and also in the past in some other things that I've done around change. So the involvement of people is extremely important. That means you have to explain to them what you're doing, why you're doing it and how they can get involved. Mm -hmm. And we spend a lot of time on, on, on engaging with people to explain what we do, but we also run all our people through workshops and all kinds of other things to make sure they are on board and part of the change within the organization. One of those tools is, is called Spirit. I think you yes. wanted to have the people on board. Yeah. You wrote them an email, said, yep. tell me what you don't like yep. about SIX. Tell me what could be better. Yep. Apparently, people tr tried to, to, to you know, get in touch with you in the beginning, it was hard because not many people 
obviously had the courage to no. do so. Yeah. Now that they do, yeah. is that is that just because you're a very likable guy, a very approachable guy, personal guy, or is it more than that? I'm not sure what I'm likable, but I like to be approachable. I yeah. like I like the boundaries to be low, and I don't like people to to feel that they talk to the CEO or something. I want them to feel they. You talk said to that right from the beginning. They, talk they to can yours. come and, and talk yeah. to you yeah. as yours and not Mr. Dyslow. Also right? introduce the ducal to her, so mm -hmm. just to make sure that the boundaries are as low as possible, so people can talk to each other. And when I get I get here by tram or by car or wherever whatever transport, or if I'm in the elevator. All the people within SIX have the courage to talk to me, and I mm -hmm. think there's no problem at all. That was just something I just needed to unlock a bit, but it was already there. Is that a cultural thing, to speak in cliches? You're mm -hmm. Dutch, and the Dutch are known to be very approachable, to be very personal. They don't like formalities too much. Do you think you're a typical Dutch in that regard? Uh, I'm, I'm on one hand a typical Dutch, on the other hand I've traveled across the globe. So I worked, I worked in Hong Kong yeah. and in Singapore and all kinds of other places. So I know what, what probably can work, from a typical Dutch uh, perspective, but, but what also cannot work. So you also have to be careful. You're, I'm in different contexts. I'm here in Switzerland, so I need to do things in a way that it is still me and that's still genuine to me, but that also connects to the Swiss people. So that's that's uh, something um, I learned during my career, that you have to be really conscious about the context and the culture that you operate in mm -hmm. and then st stay true to yourself. Uh, speaking of context, let's let's speak about the, the, the business context yep. of SIX. As I said, you had to transform the business quite drastically in the last one, one and a half years. For example, you, you let go of the car business. Uh, you had to let people go in a way. So you're kind of restructuring uh, the business. Has it arrived yet with the, with the people that work for you? Do you think it's, you're, you're at the end of that, of that change process or is it still going on for another couple of years, three years? Um, I think we're never, we've never arrived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're always on a journey. I think we've we've changed the hardware. We've changed the way we're set up with um, parting with the with the cards business, with really focusing on capital markets and the banking business, where the banking uh, where the banks are our customers. Uh, but that journey of really making that happen and to have even more impact in the banking world is now just starting. So we're doing a big payment review of a payment vision um, mm -hmm. a project to really work with all the banks in Switzerland to come up with a better vision for Switzerland for the payment industry. We're doing digital exchange, which is something which we are on in the process of building. All these kind of things are not there yet, and we're, we're in the process of delivering them. So on one hand, we've done the hardware and the restructuring of the company, but the real impact still has to come. A lot of these things are technology driven. Yep. And you, you talked a lot about it, that you're very interested in those, in those questions. It's not a coincidence that we meet here yeah. in a kind of an innovation hub of, yeah. of SIX. Yeah. Would you say that SIX now and in the future will be much more a technology company like, like Google or one of the big, big uh, companies we know from the Silicon Valley than just a kind of a finance industry tool company? Yeah. I, I don't think we will be a real pure technology company, never because we are in the finance industry, mm -hmm. so we, deliver, we need to deliver solutions and services for the finance industry and for its customers. But to do that, you need to be good at technology. You re need to be extremely strong in, in using the assets that you have and using your computer power, your programming capabilities, your software, your hardware, all the tools that you have in the technology space to deliver that service in the right way to customers. So we are not a pure technology company, but our delivery um, hinges a lot on technology. You studied both business and computer science. Yep. Which one is more helpful in your job now? Mm, good question. Good question. I, I, I don't see the difference. To me, it's, it intermingles, it blurs a bit. Mm -hmm. Technology and business have, have intertwined so much lately. Uh, in any board, in any executive team, there's always technology people and business people represented it and they mo work much more together. When I started my career, it was business here and then technology was like an aftermath. Now it's, I think it's at even play. So mm -hmm. I think they're equally important. When we speak about intertwined things, you probably noticed quite, uh, quite soon or quite early in Switzerland that things are very much mixed here. When we talk business, we also po talk politics, of course. A lot of questions that are important to the finance industry are important to politics, which brings me to the one big topic that everybody talks about at the moment, our relationship with the EU. Yep. Before we talk about specifics that, that is very important to your business, do you as an European, as a Dutch, being in the EU, uh, think you can be more helpful to explain to the Swiss how the European Union works? 
Mm, I think I can, but I don't think that's where the real issue is. I uh -huh. think the real issue is more um, that the, from the EU side, there's not enough understanding of the way Switzerland works. So uh, perhaps that's something I can help with explaining to my uh, my, my previous colleagues, my network in the EU. Because you went Switzerland through the same, works. Yeah. almost the same, the same yeah. process, right? Yeah. yeah. But the, the, the way politics work and the way the constitution works within Switzerland is very different than many of the countries in the, in the EU. And I don't think people in the EU get that. They don't mm -hmm. get that. And they, that's why they push for time. They push for quick, rash decisions uh, where they don't understand that in Switzerland, I would almost say the, the whole country needs to agree with most fundamental decisions in the country. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. Mm. And you need to take time to get everybody engaged and to get everybody included in their process. And I think in the EU, they don't understand that. But when we take a concrete example of the stock market equivalence, uh, which wasn't extended, yeah. uh, you're, you're, let's say, suffering day to day uh, from that. How, how do you see this evolve? How do you see this going on in, in, in the next six months or even in the next year? Yeah. If, uh, when I started and this equivalence came about, mm -hmm. I, we felt a bit like a victim, like, oh, what is mm -hmm. the EU doing to us? We said we cannot have that. We need to have a defense mechanism, and that's why we went to Bern, and, and the politicians... Uh, very rightfully there put this countermeasure in place. Which the famous is plan B. The pl famous plan B, which has really helped us because in the short term we've protected the, in uh, the integri integrity and the impact of the Swiss market. We actually even increased volume in the short term. Um, so that has worked really well and therefore I don't lose much sleep over this mm -hmm. anymore. Over time, it is better if Swiss shares are also... Long term, we need a solution. Yeah, long term, we need a solution. We need a solution for, for the country overall. Uh, this is just one framework agreement, or sorry, one uh, equivalence agreement mm -hmm. with the EU, but there are many more in the financial services, many more related to our business. So we need some sort of um, overarching agreement with the EU to make this happen in the long run. It's also better for the Swiss shares if they're traded not only in Switzerland, mm -hmm. but also outside Which Switzerland. They do now, so, yeah. yeah. So it is really important, I think, that there's progress on this uh, subject. Uh, did you feel torn sometimes that, as I said before, you, you are a European citizen and yeah. you, you have to speak for the Swiss as well. So in that question, do you almost felt like you had to take no. a part? No, not at all. I, I'm a European, but um, uh, if there's one thing that I'm not so proud of being a European is and being an EU citizen is the polit political um, uh, structures in, uh, in the EU. This centralized in Brussels, Strasbourg kind of extra layer of governance over and above the countries, in my view, is not the right way to go. And it's not something I'm proud of. Uh, that's why I was very quickly and easily uh, taking the side of, of my company and this country. When we come back to your leadership style, uh, we already got that, that you have a lot of drive and you have a lot of uh, work on the table that you're, you, 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 like to, uh, you like to do. Is that something that comes from within as well, that you have the impression, I want to get things done, and that's why I'm so good in this company, that you almost thrive on, or you almost f nourish or feed on, on challenges, because you have a lot of challenges. Yeah, of but um, I, I think you're right, it's the interaction. Mm -hmm. I want to make an impact, I, want, I bring my energy to the table, and by unlocking the energy in the organization, we together create more energy and we drive tra change together. I think if I would just do a BAU job where nothing has to change, I would probably get bored and not be very effective. I need a bit of this impulse and this drive to change things, to improve things. Yeah. Not just change for change, but to really improve things. That begs the question, is Switzerland the right place for you? Because you've, you've you worked in Hong Kong, you worked in Singapore, you worked in Europe, uh, of yeah. course, as well. Switzerland has a different reputation as being very stable, very conservative, sometimes maybe a bit boring. Is this the right place for such a such an action-driven <laughs> man like you? It is the perfect place because <laughs> it's the place where I can have impact at least. Yeah. Uh, and I bring something else perhaps to the table on one hand. On the other hand, if you ask me what is my biggest surprise when I joined SIX, it was the, the, the sheer um, desire for change with the staff in the organization. Wherever I went, whenever I talked about, okay, we can do this better, we can look at this, we can improve this, people came up with even more ideas. Most of the ideas and most of the things we do come from the people within SIX. So the, the willingness and the eagerness to, for change was definitely there. Mm -hmm. I think what sometimes companies do is, is a bit too hierarchical, a bit too much top-down and control. But if you release the energy in the organization, also in Switzerland, or perhaps even especially in Switzerland, there's a lot of people, very smart people with very good ideas, who then when they see the space 
to, to, to make it happen, they go for it. So let people do what they can do, let them go for it. Yeah. That could be some leadership principles. Do you have other ones, values that are important to you that you want to bring across? Yeah, I said when I started here, no politics, no, no, politics, no bullshit. Okay. So I like to be straight, I like to be transparent, and I like people to know what I do, and I tell people what I do. So that's very important to me. I like uh, participation, so I want the specialists and the people that know best to be included and to actually be leading in decision-making process. I don't like organizations or leadership style where everything has to come to the CEO mm -hmm. to decide. I think it needs to be decided on the right level. Uh, I like to have a bit of fun. Um, that's really important to me also in terms of um, getting energy in the job. And I like to win also. That's one of my principles also. And something that you like as well, yeah. and correct me if I'm wrong, is risk and risk taking. Yeah. I once read a very interesting quote of yours that you said, for you, uh, the banks, the finance industries, sometimes they avoid too much yep. taking risks, yep. even if they're in a way uh, prepared to, to, to manage risks. Yep. Is that something you want to bring across as well to your people that you say, don't be afraid to take risks? Yeah, we talk about that a lot internally. Um, and of course, I also bring my own personal perspective to this uh, into the company. I've always said you have to be, if you do a meaningful job and you really want to make impact, you have to be willing to lose your job every day. Are you? Yes, I am. If I cannot do the right things, if I, if I cannot do the things that are meaningful and have a positive impact on SIX and the finance industry here in Switzerland, then the company should probably fire me. Um, and if you want to do the right things, there is always some resistance and there's always some pressure points. Mm -hmm. So you have to be willing to put something on the line, in my view. Otherwise, it's not worth being in the game. What does that mean for SIX in the future? If you lead the company the way you just said, yeah. the company might end up being something completely different in five years than it is now. I don't think completely different, but it will definitely have di very different nuances, I think. And I think it will be bigger, it will do more of the processes and, and of, the, of the, the, the shared activities within the finance plots. It will drive innovation more and we will have um, potentially restructured some of the, of the business models that we have. Like a digital exchange will completely mm -hmm. change the way we do the existing exchange. So those are the kind of things I'm hoping for. You're hoping for them. Are you, are yeah. you ever afraid of them as well? I mean, change, um, transformation, uh, disruption, that comes with a lot of uncertainty and with a lot of fear. Yeah. Do you ever think we might not be here in 10 years time, in five years time, even with the whole digitalization, with uh, the, the, the power shift maybe into uh, the blockchain technology, something that you're very interested in as well? I hardly ever think like that. I'm not saying never, but yeah. I hardly ever think like that because if you, th if you get too bogged down on these kind of thoughts, then you, you, you become paralyzed. You have to push forward. You have to uh, make sure that you really have impact. And if you trust in that you do the right thing, then you will be there. If you uh, worry too much, if you don't do the courageous things, you might become a dinosaur and be overtaken. Mm -hmm. So I think the, 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 the forward-looking and, and changing approach is much more a guarantee for sustainability than staying where you are and holding on to what you have today and not changing. Another tricky question for the non-Swiss. Do you think Switzerland is ready for that change, for that transformation? I think I, s I see a lot of um, uh, companies and, and other leaders of other companies uh, ready for that change and we see some great examples already happening. I think the finance industry is perhaps a bit slower in moving, not just in Switzerland, across the globe actually, mm -hmm. um, but also banks and other financial institutions are seeing now that if they don't change they become a target or they, bec they will lose customers or customer satisfaction will come down or their, their cost to income ratio will not be sustainable. So I see more call for action and also willingness for action. What about you personally? Do you see yourself uh, working in Switzerland for another 20, 30 years? Or is it going to be the way it, it has always been? Yep. That you're traveling around, that you might find another challenge in a, in a country you don't know yet, uh, when someone is hunting for you again? Yeah, well, who can predict the future? But I must say, I really enjoy Switzerland. I was having dinner with my wife the other day, and I said to her, this is a country where I can see myself staying for a long time, and potentially even af after my working career. So we really feel at home in Switzerland. We yeah. think it's a country that, that suits us really well. So who knows, perhaps uh, I'm here for life. It's quite striking, speaking of your family. I, I read somewhere that you always went somewhere where you started work. Yeah. 
you spend the first maybe six months there alone, yeah. and then you have the family come over as well. Yeah. Is that something that is very important to you, first of all? Of course, having the family there, but yeah. maybe not from the start, because you have so much to do yeah. that you wouldn't do them justice if you had them right from the start. Yeah. yeah, and I think in the long run, it is so important that your family is happy, that you have to have the right um, uh, headspace for that. So therefore, it's good to come and to really focus on work first and really have all your time dedicated to work. And then after usually five, six months, you, you, you start to get the hang of things and, and things become a little bit more familiar to you. And then there's room and you know the country a little bit and then there's room for the family to get introduced. And usually somehow it's also linked to school holidays. So mm -hmm. these things all come together. And it's worked really well for me so far. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.